Hey, 49er fans, this 49ers report is brought to you by Manscaped. Go to manscaped.com slash 49ers for 20% off your first order, plus free shipping on a plethora of great products. Manscaped.com slash 49ers is the sponsor for today's video. Now, before we jump in to today's video, this is a news and rumor stuff, and there's actually some new news that I want to get to here with the 49ers, and obviously the first one is the big news that everybody probably saw on Twitter. It is that John Lynch has agreed to a brand new contract extension. So, it's a five-year deal. He signed through 2020. 24. We don't have the details on the money, but it basically pairs him up with Kyle Shanahan for the future because Shanahan was extended through 2025 earlier this offseason. Now, this is interesting. Let me just say this. We talked about a scenario where they could not extend John Lynch and just keep Kyle Shanahan as the de facto head coach and GM. I was not a fan of that overall idea, but I could understand the thought process there. I think re-signing and extending John Lynch is huge because you got to remember, he was considered a strange hire. The former, obviously, Bronco and Tampa Bay Buccaneers Year. He did some Fox News uh, color analysts for NFL games. He came in and has immediately built a winner. This is huge, and I think great news for all 49er fans in general. Niners Nation has a great uh, write-up on this. They said, quote, more than anything, Lynch's aggressiveness has stood out to me. He has no issue making a bold move if he feels like it's going to improve the roster. That's the guy who I want running my team, and I agree. That's the guy that obviously all 49er fans should want running their team because he pairs so well with Kyle Shanahan. Shanahan has this vision. He has this offense. He has this idea of what the team should look like and the players he needs. And Lynch goes, okay, I'll get him for you. Uh, you need to do defensive lineman? I'll get him in, in the draft this year. Oh, you need a wide receiver as well? I'll trade back in. No problem. Not a big deal. He makes the right moves and has shown that really year in and year out. He was fantastic just this offseason, right? He, he somehow pulled off not re-signing DeForest Buckner and instead turned not paying DeForest Buckner into Brandon Ayuk, Javon Kinlaw, and a trade for Trent Williams. He also traded away Marquise Goodwin. He restructured Raheem Mostert. The offseason, A+. plus. I mean, they probably had one of the best offseasons in the NFL, and as a Super Bowl team last year, they shouldn't be able to have this good of an offseason, and yet they were able to. I know Lynch has not been 100%. His first draft class, Solomon Thomas, obviously is kind of an issue, and a lot of people want to harp on that. But recently, he's built an absolute winner, and this is a Super Bowl caliber roster again in 2020, and it was that way until the fourth quarter in Patrick Mahomes last year in 2019. So it's big news. It's good news. No one should be upset about this. It's a perfect overall pairing, and I think him and Kyle Shanahan through 2024, it would be disappointing if they do not get a Super Bowl during that time frame. Now, it's very possible. A lot of great GMs and coaches don't win Super Bowls, but I think it'd be it'd be surprising if the 49ers are unable to win a Super Bowl or at least get back to the Super Bowl over the next five years, four years during the Lynch uh, and Kyle Shanahan pairing and contract extensions. First question here, drop a like down below if the 49ers will have a Super Bowl team under John Lynch. I, I, I think they will. I just said that they will. If you agree with me, give me a thumbs up that the 49ers will win a Super Bowl under John Lynch in the comment section right now. You know, I bet John Lynch, he seems like, like a guy who would really enjoy using Manscaped, our sponsor for today's video. Obviously, it brought to you by Manscaped, manscaped.com slash 49ers. You get 20% off and free shipping by just going to the link down below in the description box. And you can get yourself the Lawnmower 3.0, which is obviously their trimmer that has that special guard in it. That way you can use it anywhere on your body and it's not going to nick and cut you like every other trimmer basically does. Also, the perfect package, which is this great overall combination of a lot of their products, a great carrying bag as well. It's fantastic. I highly encourage you guys to check out their stuff because if you go to manscaped.com slash 49ers, like we said, 20% off for all of you 49er fans plus free shipping. Okay, here's your, I guess, weekly George Kittle contract update where we talk about the things that people say, and yet in reality, nothing has actually happened. So here's the deal. There's a new report. Ian Rappaport went on NFL.com, as Ian Rappaport does very, very often, and said that they are not close to having a deal. You remember, we talked about this a month ago when they said they weren't close to having a deal, but since then, we've had talks where they were close, they are just about to have one, oh, it might not happen. So here we are. Today's update on George Kittle, because people always DM me, is that they're not close. Now, does that mean they won't have a deal done by the start of the NFL season? I have no idea. George Kittle has reported to training camp. He's there. He's going to be practicing even under his current very cheap rookie deal. But the question for me now is, will the deal get done by week one? He Rappaport said this. This is where I get this from. Quote, my understanding is they are not particularly close on a George Kittle contract extension, end quote. But he did say he will be the highest paid tight end in the NFL. So like I said, I have to report this stuff to you guys because I cover the 49ers for you. But the whole point of this whole topic is there's no new update. There literally is not an update. Yes, duh, he will be the highest paid tight end in the NFL. And yeah, no surprise, they aren't close because he wants $20 million. The team wants to give him $13 million. So as I keep saying... Let's meet in the middle, right? 20, 
13. What's the middle of that? Hmm, $15 million? Does that work? Hmm, that would make sense for me. So there's no news here. I mean, other than the fact that they aren't close. And again, does this mean they won't get a deal done and the 49ers are doomed to lose George Kittle in the offseason? Oh my, no, no, it's not. He was just rated the seventh highest player in the NFL on the NFL's ridiculous top 100 list, but at least that one was very accurate. He's the best tight end in football. It's very simple. I think this gets done. I hope it gets done by week one, but even if it doesn't, I'm sure we'll still talk about it, but it still is not a big deal overall. So the whole point of the George Kittle update is to calm you down, take a breath. It's fine. Even though they're not close, it will get done. I can guarantee that, even though I can't guarantee it because I have no knowledge in terms of insider knowledge, but trust me, it's going to get done. No worries. Give me an over-under on the... Um, uh, money for George Kittle. I, I, I'm put over under at $15 million per year. It's going to be over for like a yearly basis type O. It's going to be under the type U down below for under. I, I hope it's under, but I think it's probably going to be right about $15 million. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section. And of course, as soon as he signs the contract, you guys know this, right? We'll have a whole video. I'll break it down. And if you want to be the first to know when that video drops, subscribe here to the 49ers Report, the best and only, in my opinion, the only place you, you need to be at for your 49ers coverage here on YouTube and really anywhere because we're covering it wall to wall non-stop all the time so just go ahead and subscribe in the comment section right below above the comment section in the little red box you know the drill just click it okay so even with the George Kittle news we now have more news about other tight ends that they're in soft talks with to go ahead and sign it's this is hilarious right so even though like on the uh, literally the day of they say the George Kittle uh, contract is not close. We now have these reports that they're talking to other tight ends. And these tight ends are Jordan Reed, who we've talked about, and Delaney Walker, who is also a free agent. My question with this is, do they need a tight end? And two, is this just smoke to get Kittle to go ahead and commit to a contract? It feels like it's just smoke to get Kittle to get in the contract. Now, listen, Jordan Reed last year didn't play. He had too, too many injuries, too many concussions, but he still could be a very viable number two tight end. And Delaney Walker uh, didn't play in all the games last year, but still could be a, like I said, viable number two tight end, much like Jordan Reed. The problem is, is that neither of these guys make sense from a monetary standpoint unless you're signing them for very, very cheap. Now, before I show you where this rumor comes from, and it's very well sourced, I have a full quote, quote for you guys here. Pick one. If you had to pick one and you had to sign one of these two, I type R for Reed down below, type W for Walker. Who would you guys sign? Let me know in the comments section. Here's what Yahoo Sports says. So the Athletics' Matt Barr reported Wednesday the 49ers had soft talks with free agent Delaney Walker in the spring, citing sources. Additionally, San Francisco has shown a similar level of interest and former Washington football team tight end Jordan Reed, who, of course, they can just pick up because he's a free agent. The problem with all this is, again, money. And two, it feels like a smokescreen because if they were talking to Delaney Walker in the spring, they would have gotten a deal done because it is the fall now, right? It's the end of summer. It's about to be the fall. So I don't see either of these deals happening unless they are really, really trying to play hardball with uh, George Kittle and trying to get him to say, hey, listen, we're just going to go get Jordan Reed and you can just play for one more year and then we're going to let you go. Now, the odds of that happening again are very rare. I just talked about how they will get a deal done and I feel like they will. But maybe this is just smoke to go ahead and make people like, ooh, they might uh, try and, you know, get George Kittle to re-sign for cheaper because they signed Delaney Walker. And in reality, both of them basically did nothing last year in terms of Walker and Jordan Reed. So I wouldn't worry about it overall. I think Ross Dwelly is going to be the number two tight end for the 49ers on their depth chart. If they somehow can find a way to bring a Walker or a Reed in at the right price and still pay George Kittle, that's even better. It's just hard to do that overall because they probably would have done it up to this point. And obviously we're sitting here and they were unable to do that. There you go. That's the latest 49er news and rumors for the day. It's interesting because training camp is here, but because of all the health protocols, it takes a little time for people to get tested and then quarantine and then get on the football field. So all of our training camp coverage will be happening. It's just a matter of once the practices actually start and we get news in terms of position battles and we get news in terms of, heaven forbid, injuries or who's performing well. We'll have that all for you guys here. But today was a good day for John Lynch and a good day for 49er fans to extend that deal. I think it's going to be fine with George Kittle, even though they are not close. And this idea of soft talks with other tight ends, I, I just don't see being a massive problem because the odds of them actually going and signing one of these guys is very rare. It's just fun that the Athletic can get a report about it. We can talk about it here, which you guys can uh, get excited about the 49ers season. So there you go. All tell me out for today here on the 49ers Report. I am your host and fearless leader, Thomas Mott. Obviously, no live Q&A on this Thursday because we did it on Tuesday, but we'll have another one next week. So just stay tuned. You know the drill, right? You're subscribed. You're good to go. We're buddies on Twitter. Not a problem. Okay. Again, all tell me out for today on the 49ers Report. I'm Thomas Mott signing off for the rest of your day.